What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to discuss a topic that is near and dear to my heart, unfortunately. And that is the code set P1188 and P1189. Now you may be wondering what this code set is and why we're even making an entire video talking about it. I will answer your question in just a minute. But if you haven't gotten this code set, you're probably in one of two boats. You either thought, oh, that was pretty easy, or you're in my boat and it was the kiss of death for your wallet and your sanity. Before we get started, two things. Firstly, I'm going to link in the description any parts that I reference, any tools that I reference, and some of them are going to be Amazon links. It would mean a lot to me and would help me out a lot if you bought those things in there. I'll get a small kickback. This car is expensive, college is expensive. I'd really appreciate it. Secondly, one of the OG E36 bloggers, Quinn, from the Menace YouTube channel, made a video on this code set a few years ago. I'm going to reference a few of the points that he made. So go watch his video after watching this if you'd like to know more about this code set. So what is P1188 and P1189? P1188 and P1189 are fuel trim codes bank one and bank two. However, these are not codes that can actually be thrown out by these cars and they're not defined by BMW. Rather, what they're theorized to be is a default code set for cheap scanners to throw out in place of whatever the car is telling it and it's just its way of interpreting that. So the reason why this matters is because these codes can be anything from a bad valve seal to bad gas. Yes, that much variation, which can make it extremely frustrating to diagnose. So today, I kind of wanted to just make this guide explaining some of the common issues, common causes of this code set, how to diagnose them, and how to fix them, just to hopefully make your guys' experience of this code set a little easier than mine. I would love to say, I really hope none of you ever have to experience this code set, and that is true, but it's kind of like telling an E60 M5 owner, I hope you never have to replace your rod bearings. It's not if, it's when. To start us off, the most common cause I have found for this code set is a vacuum leak. The reason I suspect this is the case is because there isn't really a specific code that can tell you there is a vacuum leak. So P1188 and P1189 just kind of end up being the default, like your air fuel mixtures are wrong code. And that ends up being the computer's way of telling you that there is an issue. So we come under the hood here, some common leak areas and the vacuum system. Starting over here would be your throttle body boots, throttle body gaskets, your dipstick O-rings, and then under the intake manifold, you have your CCV hoses and grommets, your idle control valve hoses. There's one right there, it kind of comes up. These are just things you want to look for, your intake manifold gaskets, which come around here. There are a lot of areas that these can leak from, and of course there's a bunch of other small lines, the brake booster lines, whatever. There are tons of places where you can have a vacuum leak, which can be really frustrating, but fortunately there is an easy test for this, and that is a smoke test. Now I know smoke tests kind of have a little taboo around them. People don't like to pay a shop to do it. I can totally understand that. It costs one to $200 at a shop to have a smoke test done. Fortunately, you can buy a smoke tester and do it yourself on Amazon for a lot cheaper than that. For a hundred bucks, you can buy a smoke tester. You hook it up around here and it will pressurize the entire system with visible smoke that you can see and you will be able to find your leak that way. I've linked a tester in the description. It's like I just said, $100 on Amazon, and I would highly, highly recommend if you're gonna own one of these cars long-term or any old car, not even just BMW, that you buy a smoke tester. After one test, you've made your money back, and after two, you've saved yourself a lot of money. It's very, very much worth it. If a vacuum leak is not your problem, I recommend that you get a software or a scanner that can read live data. In the description, I know there's already a lot of links down there, but in the description, I've linked the video that I made a while back explaining how to download the BMW INPA software. You can get the BMW dealer software for free and use it on your BMW. All it takes is a $30 cable and some time. It's a little annoying to set up, but once you do it, it is really easy to use. I highly, highly recommend that. What that'll also allow you to do is read specific codes. So you will not get P1188 and P1189. You'll be able to see specifically what the car is telling you. We'll talk about some live data in a second, but another common cause that I've seen with P1188 and P1189 is the injector is going bad. There are two ways an injector can fail. There's mechanical failure and electrical failure. If you smell fuel on startup, it's very likely that your injectors need to be rebuilt. There's little O-rings, little seals on the injectors that go bad, and what'll happen is it'll start leaking fuel on startup when the rubber's cold and hard. The smell will go away when it's warm because the seals will heat up and expand 
and they will seal better. Different from selling fuel from a tailpipe when it's cold, which is pretty normal in the first couple minutes to start up. But honestly, I would just rebuild your fuel injectors. There's little filters inside, the pintle caps that control your spray pattern. All those parts just kind of get old and brittle and over time, they just start to not function as well. Honestly, it's really cheap. It's only like $30 for the kit. Once again, I will link the video up here in the description, wherever you guys can watch the video I made explaining how to do that. It'll take a couple hours and it's very worth it as a preventative item, but that alone can cause a pretty bad misfire and or P1188 and P1189 code. The other failure for an injector is an electrical failure. The way you can kind of tell this is you'll take the fuel rail cover off and what you want to do is you want to stick a screwdriver on the top of the solenoid and when you do that, you're gonna to wanna to stick your ear to the top of the screwdriver and see if you can hear the tapping. The rhythm sounds off or different from a lot of the other injectors. That could very well cause your improper fuel air mixture. You really wanna pay attention to the ones that you have the coat on because P1188 is just your front three and P1189 just your back three. So really pay attention to that. Sometimes you also get these paired with a misfire you can swap the injectors around if you wanna test them that way, but if the solenoid itself is bad on the injector, you will have to replace it. Rebuilding it will not fix it. Coming back to the engine here, another fuel-related item you can test is the pressure at the rail. I'm not gonna take this off right now, but on OBD2 cars, there's a Schrader valve right at the front here. On OBD1 cars, I think it's further back. I can't totally remember. But you can plug in a fuel pressure gauge to the rail, test the fuel pressure, and it's off. I would highly recommend trying a fuel pressure regulator. That is going to be on the bottom of the car, on the driver's side, kind of in the passenger area. They're very cheap, and while you're in there, I would actually go ahead and replace the fuel filter too. And while you're at that, I would replace the little rubber lines that lead up to the fuel filter. They're very cheap. And ask me how I know that they crack and go bad and start leaking fuel. It's not a fun time. I referenced it earlier, but if you have a misfire paired with your P1188 and P1189, I would start checking your ignition parts. If you come over here, there are a few parts of your ignition that can go bad. There's your spark plugs and your coils. Obviously, those sit under here. Check the codes, see which cylinder is misfiring and creating your code. You can swap around your coils and your spark plugs to see which one is the culprit or if that's your failure point. If you have a multi-cylinder misfire, and you think it's related to ignition, the coil pack wiring harness over here can go bad. It's not really that common, so it might be worth pulling out the multimeter or if you have one at the junkyard or spare sitting around, you just plug it in and see if that has any difference. But I thought it was worth noting. And on electrical failures, your ECU sitting right over here can also go bad. This one is extremely uncommon and I would not like tell somebody to try this first, but you can pull it out and inspect all the solder joints and everything and see if there's any obvious damage, but it's not a foolproof test. Sometimes the coil drivers do just go bad. And if that happens, ECU replacement, but really I, unless the car has been flooded or there's some reason for you to think the ECU might be bad, I would not really bother checking that. And if you're not concerned about those, I have a list of sensors that can be an issue. First in that list, we're going to come over here to our good old pal, the math. A really easy way to test for the math is just to unplug it and see if that makes your motor run any better. If you unplug that and it runs better, that is an issue. You need to do something with that. You can either replace it, and if you do replace it, I would only get a genuine BMW one because they don't make OE ones anymore and I don't trust the Bremi. Whole other story. Or if you don't have a math code, you can clean them with math cleaner. I've had good luck with that. They are very fragile, so be careful, but sometimes they do just get dirty and start reading incorrectly. Another sensor is your O2 sensors. Your O2 sensors, plug in under here. You can, again, look at the live data, see if they're reading incorrectly or see if one's reading obviously different from the other. And this is the case. I would go ahead and replace them. If you do replace them only by genuine BMW or the OE NTK sensors, don't buy Bosch. RK Tune says they don't work. A lot of other people on forums say they don't work. I put NTK on here. I would just recommend you do the same. If you can't find NTK, I would buy genuine BMW. FCP Euro, has them on back order. So I don't know if they quit making them or what the deal is with that. But if you get stuck with the Jenny BMW sensors, I would just bring the money for it. Along with O2 sensors, only the pre-cat O2 sensors control your air fuel mixtures. The post-cat ones are just to tell the computer if the catalytic converters are working or not. So do not bother replacing the other ones. And honestly, if you're really on a budget, you could even swap them around because they don't really do much for how the car runs. But that is another very common failure point for this code set. And another common failure point is the camshaft position sensor, which is located right in this area down here. 
What the camshaft position sensor does is it reads the essentially the timing using pulses to tell the motor where the timing's at and the motor can do its air fuel mixtures and run accordingly. If that goes bad, it will start reading wrong data to the engine. It can create a multi-cylinder misfire and P1188 and P1189. With replacing this one, I would only get a genuine BMW one. There is no OE option. You want it to work, that's a sensor you definitely, definitely, definitely want to work. Just get genuine BMW, that one's worth it. Kind of similar to that is the crank sensor. If the crank sensor totally fails, it will just create a crank no start condition. But if it's failing, then it can cause, again, multi-cylinder misfires, P1188, P1189. Also, another note with the crank sensor, is check to see if your cars had the recall done. They did an update with the wiring harness, and if yours has not been done, then I would also do the do the recall or the upgrade, whatever they call it, because they switch it from a six volt system to a 12 volt system, and it just allows the sensor to operate more efficiently. As far as brands for replacing this sensor, Jenny BMW would be highest on my list, but FCP Euro does carry a VDO one, which is labeled as OE. I haven't, this is actually one of the only sensors on this car that I have not replaced. I have a VDO one in a box, that I'm gonna throw on this car just for testing purposes because I wanna let you guys know if you can use that one or not. A lot of people on the internet say that it's okay to use a VDO sensor because it is OE and the same part as the BMW one. So I'll take the word for it. I'm gonna throw one on this car and I'll let you guys know later how that goes. But the crank sensor is another potential culprit of this issue. More sensors on this list are your throttle position sensor, your intake air temperature sensor, which sits up under there, your knock sensors, et cetera, et cetera. I think that's about all of them. I could be forgetting a couple. I'm not totally sure. If I remember any later, I'll list them in the description with everything else. It's gonna be like a complete mess down there, but you guys kind of get the point. There is a lot to unbox with this code set and there's a lot of things that can go wrong. These cars are pretty old. So honestly, if you're keeping this car long-term, I would just replace everything. That's kind of what I did with this car because I know that I'm keeping it for a while. And I know that if I don't replace it now, I'll have to replace it later. It'll be worth it, give you a lot of peace of mind, and will help your car be more reliable. I don't usually like to tell people to just throw parts at cars, but they're kind of too old now to just kind of fix and get along. Most of these things, all these parts have 100K miles on them, they're 15 years old, plus they were due a long time ago, and they just need to be replaced. So really, I would just kind of spend the $1,500, go through, redo everything, use FCP Euro, get your warranty, and be done with it. But if you are going to try to diagnose it or you've already replaced a lot of parts, I hope this video was extremely helpful to you guys. I know when I was looking initially for this code set issue, there was not a lot of information online and it was kind of difficult. But with that said, I hope you all enjoyed this quick or long, we'll see when I'm editing it, little guide to P1188 and P1189. If it was helpful, go ahead and smash that subscribe button, hit that like button. It would really mean a lot to me. Share this with your friends if your friend's having this issue. And feel free to comment down below if there's anything I missed your P1188 or P1189 experiences. I'd love to hear them. Or any questions you might have about anything I said in this video or about your specific issue, I'll try to answer it to the best of my ability. I, like I said, unfortunately have a lot of experience with this code set, but I'm really hoping that this is kind of behind me for a while anyway, because I replaced a lot of these parts and that's how I'm able to tell you guys what to use and what not to use. But I'll see you guys in the next one.